Welcome to the Fabric Podcast, where we explore company culture and how it scales as a company grows. Brought to you by the team at The Receptionist, a bootstrapped Denver-based software company. Each episode of Fabric will set out to uncover unique and uncommon answers to the question, how do companies of any size create a culture and core values that employees actually live out? On this episode of the podcast, we're joined by Andy Alsop, our founder, president, and CEO, along with Sarah Reimers, our people operations coordinator. We're talking about stand-ups, what they are, how we use them to enhance communication and connection, and how they've evolved as we've navigated through COVID. We've been able to see positive impact both personally and professionally by doing these regular check-ins over Slack and Zoom, and we talk about how you can use these with your team. Andy and Sarah also share about some of their favorite stand-up moments. Enjoy the episode. Well, Andy, welcome back to the show. We've seen you quite a bit lately, so we're excited to have you back again. I know. I feel comfortable now. I've been uh, on the podcast so many times. You have. We love it. And Sarah, it's been so long since we've had you on the show, so welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. So today we are talking about stand-ups, and I think we need to start this conversation with what exactly are stand-ups? That is a great question. So this is the first company I've worked for that's actually had stand-ups. So it's been a nice transition. So we actually currently use kind of two different styles of stand-ups. So we have our stand-up posts that we do every day of the week. And then once a week, we have a stand-up meeting where everyone on the team is on there. Um, And basically the style of it is to share what you worked on the day before, um, kind of highlighting any major projects, anything like that. And the intention is to kind of cascade information down make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, And then this avoids us potentially needing another meeting later on. So we do department stand-ups at the end of the in-person meeting. So Delyn will come on and tell us what's going on for engineering. Um, Andy will share something that's going on for operations or I'll present something. And then we don't have to have another meeting separately to share those announcements. Well, that's always good when you can avoid meetings that should have been an email or now ultimately in a stand-up. And what was the history of stand-ups at The Receptionist? How were they used pre-COVID? Let's go back almost a year now and talk about what these used to look like when we were in person in a semi-remote team. Well, the funny thing was that we were a really small team. So when uh, we were doing stand-ups, we had a a small office over at Industry uh, Denver, which for those people who know the Denver area is on Brighton Boulevard and 29th. And I can remember it well because our office looked out on Brighton Boulevard and we would literally all stand up in the morning and say what we were going to do that day and what we had done the previous day and what were our blockers. Were there any things that were kind of standing in our way in terms of what we needed to do? And uh, it began to evolve as we got larger. What happened was we uh, couldn't all fit in the room was one, one thing. And uh, it started to get a little bit longer. And we started to, like, we try to do where, you know, of course, fabric and the the eye and fabric is innovation. We're always trying to innovate. And we were really focusing on how could we make the stand up a little bit more reasonable, considering that, as you said, we're half the time we're remote and half the time in person pre COVID. So what we were uh, decided to do was to start sta- start doing live standups. We would do them like we're doing a meeting now. We would do it online, but then we'd also post the stand to um, Slack. So we would use Slack to post what we did the previous day and what we were going to do that day, and that um, kind of evolved. And then it kept evolving more and more. And now we're in our current format, which is as Sarah said, we post four days out of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And then we have a live standup, uh, which is all on Slack right now because of COVID. But before COVID, we were actually all getting into a large conference room in a different industry building where we moved because we were, had grown. And we'd actually uh, be all together and we would go one by one. And the fun thing about standups is that you have to nominate this next person. And it's always so funny because if somebody goes away for vacation, they come back and they forget they have to nominate somebody. And then the room is totally silent. And everybody is looking at that person like, oh, right, I got to nominate somebody. And they go and nominate somebody. So that's kind of the history and how we got to where we are. Yeah. And you started to touch on this, but Sarah, tell us a little bit more about how we adapted them during COVID. Because obviously, you know, as we've said on multiple instances, we were already a semi-remote team. So 
we were comfortable functioning there, but we also really love to be around each other. So being away was hard. So talk to us about how our standups adapted during COVID. Absolutely. So we, like Andy, you said, we have the one every you know week where we meet in person and it's definitely like the highlight of the week. We're all excited to see each other. It's the only time we really all get to be in a room at the same time. And it's just really nice to kind of have that fun aspect of fabric. So that at least has been a highlight, I would say, of everyone's week. And then we also adapted them in a way where, I mean, COVID, COVID is and was a bummer. So I mean, I think leadership noticed that and they realized that, you know, posting what you did yesterday and today was kind of just kind of feeling like another task. So they added the aspect of kind of adding a feel good and more personal approach. So not only would I post what I did yesterday at work, I would also say maybe a win that I had during the day or something fun I did in the evening. And it just kind of really enforce that positive intent and just kind of thinking more happily during such a dark time. So that's been a really nice way that it's adapted too. Yeah, Andy. So Sarah mentioned that, you know, leadership sort of took the lead to make some adjustments in how the stands were happening. Can you talk to us a little bit about the behind the scenes and, and how that all happened? Yeah. I mean, we've done, uh, we did the the podcast back in March, right after we kind of shut down and kind of did a review of like, what are we doing and what did we change? And I think I even mentioned in there that one of the things we did was to change our stand-up so that, as Sarah said, it's a little more light. Just what did you do yesterday? And what did you have for dinner? What's your favorite show? What is something that happened that was funny? And I think it's really, I think, it, I think it's been a good change. And I think it's what we wanted to do from a leadership level, which was to take sort of the intensity of like, we got to get our work done and everything. We're now in this time that we don't know what we can, we can predict and what we can't predict. And we do know what we can control and not control. And one of the things we can control is just to be a little bit lighter and just to have a a little more fun. And I think, I think everybody's binge watching a lot more shows because it is coronavirus. We're not going out a lot. So I know personally, I have this huge list of shows and movies that people are like, I just watched this. I just watched that. And, uh, and it's really grown my list of things I'm watching, uh, as, as I'm at home with my wife and stuff. So it's been great too. I mean, just hearing what people say and we've had people share recipes. I made the most amazing whatever. And then people will come in and, you know, they'll respond to that post and say, well, can you get me the recipe for that? So I kind of, what it helped us do is feel together and close, even though distance was keeping us apart physically. Yeah. Well, in addition to helping, you know, sort of solidify that bond and help us stay feeling closer and really giving us, yeah, great recommendations for all of our binge watching. Um, how do you think that evolution of the standup impacted the team, both professionally and personally? Well, I definitely want to hear what Sarah has to say on this, but I think for, uh, you know, and this is kind of like all of coronavirus is, and the impact that all of coronavirus had, for from for myself as the CEO and for leadership, it taught us the necessity to be able to respond to the um, specific event and what was going on at the time and course adjust. So for me, I've never really had to go through that. I've obviously been, I've been through, of course, I'm an entrepreneur for a long time. I've had to go through the downturn of 2008 and the tech bomb bubble of 2001, and none of them even though they seem to be super impactful, none of them was anything like coronavirus. So for me, I felt like the being able to even change little things like what we were doing in our standup really showed and helped me understand how those little things can be important to everybody else. And I loved it personally. I thought it was so cool that I was able to learn about the things I've I've learned about the team. But Sarah, let me know. What do you, what do you think? Well, I absolutely agree with that. I'll, I'll touch on both of them. I feel like professionally, And this was pre and post during COVID, but I think it helps us to know when to reach out. Like when we hear a project of, oh, I can collaborate with them on that. I have some really good ideas that I think I can bring to the table. So it really helps me know what Hannah and CX is doing or Andy in sales. And it just kind of triggers that professional camaraderie and, you know, thinking of where we can kind of collaborate together. And then it also lets us know when like a certain department maybe just needs more support. Like I feel like CX has really had a lot of things on their plate right now. It just pauses, cancellations, you know, they're really, I mean, we have such a radical team there that they, they bring the best support I think I've ever seen across, you know, a customer support aspect. But I mean, it's hard. They're hearing some really hard stories right now. And just really, I think letting us know of like, maybe we should pop in and offer an extra hour of support, or maybe Tom, the director of sales, 
the other day said, take Friday off. Sales team has it. We, we got it covered. And I, again, I think it's just really helped offer that level of support and just really, really being there for the team. And then personally, I think people have been really vulnerable in their standups, you know, really saying like, Hey, like yesterday wasn't a good day. I I'm really feeling the stress of the world right now. And again, just another way to not offer support as like a professional, but personal, like I'll reach out and just say, Hey, like, hope you're doing okay. Or I don't know, we've really grown as a the team with these standups. And I feel closer to everyone, even though theoretically we are kind of further than we've ever been because we're not in the same room. So that has been really cool to see. Yeah. So there's been some good evolution, obviously some great benefits from being forced to make these adjustments. Um, Andy, what do you see happening with standups whenever we do get to go back to the usual semi-remote status? Will they stay the way they've been? Do you see changes being made? Mm. I know we're going to keep some things. I know that we're going to keep the most more personal nature to it. And I thought I loved what what Sarah had to say about being vulnerable. I mean, I think that we've even gotten to the point where we've become, I don't know, comfortable enough to be able to um, talk about mental health. And that's a really important thing uh, to talk about. And so I think even our, our stand-ups and the ability for us to just be like, you know, I'm not having a great mental health day. I didn't have one, you know, and that's that kind of level of vulnerability that is, I think, really incredible. So I don't want to lose that. Um, I know it'll go back to our leadership team. And I know that we may we may return to some of the things of like, what did we do the previous day? What are we doing this day as the, you know, as our sort of engine continues to get bigger and grow and things like that? It'll, it'll be important for us to know that. But the idea of like, what did you do last night? You know, what's something funny? What's something you know, maybe even now as we're starting to get out of our houses and do more things, people, let's share, like, what did we do? I went for a weekend and I did this and I had this amazing experience. I recommend it for other people. Or I did continue to binge watch this or I had made that great recipe. I don't want to lose that. Uh, I think that's going to stay the same. Yeah. Well, let's keep the, these lighter moments going. Share with us some of the best stand-up moments that we've had. Let's let our listeners in on a little behind the scenes what goes on. I don't know. So I, for one of my personal favorites, and Sarah knows this one as already, is this last Halloween, I was the, probably one of the only people that didn't dress up. But all of a sudden, as we're going on our stand-up, which is live over Zoom, one more little kind of tile kept popping up with somebody. And Kayla was uh, uh, Moira from Schitt's Creek. And I can't remember. Oh, oh, Michael was pizza. He dressed up as a pizza. And for the rest of the day, we were calling them pizza and, and people changed their names in their on their Zoom so that they associated exactly with who they were. Because, you know, you go to a costume party and sometimes you say, I'm not sure who you were, but everybody put it in there. And it was, oh, man, I just one of my favorites. I took an awesome screenshot of it. Really cool. Well, and it was extra funny, as Andy said, we changed our names. So I popped into a meeting later and I'm st- I was still Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> Thorough meeting, and they're like, "Who?" And, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny, and we we did a little vote at the end, and everyone got to vote on their best costumes. So you know, something we would have done in the office, we just evolved it to work with that kind of online platform. We have a lot of animals pop in during stand up, so that's always really fun. Um, our newest team member, Alex, uh, he has a mini horse, as we like to call him, or her. Sorry, it's a Ripley. It's a female. She is a Great Dane. I believe she's a purebred. Either way, just this massive dog, and she just like walks back and forth. So we love seeing all the animals pop in and out. I love that. And are there any other? Have there been any other surprising sort of moments or outcomes from the standups that really is more about our our culture and less about those traditional business outcomes and goals and things that you might think are supposed to come from these check ins with your team? I would say the one the, the one that I always think is a little bit funny is that. We do these live demos. Some people call them webinars. And Michael had sort of crafted this whole thing he was going to do. And the live demo was immediately following the stand-up. And so we all knew that he was doing something. And I had even seen this really bizarre Amazon order come through where I was like, why is there a wig in here? And why is there this? (laughs) <laughs> and it was just sort of this uh, this build up in the stand up, like, what are you going to do? And he's like, you're just going to have to watch it out. So I, I thought that was kind of funny. So, 
feel like the one that jumps out just to reiterate is the how vulnerable and authentic people have been. I think that's what's jumped out to me with our recent standups. I, I really appreciate it with the aspect of mental health and how much people have been comfortable with coming to the team and just saying like, this is how I'm feeling today. So that's a really, really cool feeling. Yeah. And any tips on how to run these standups, especially if you have a larger company, obviously we've grown in the last couple of years and we've found ways to make this work, but for companies that are larger, Andy, do you have thoughts um, for how people can start to do this with their teams? Well, I think it started with us very early on, but I don't think it has to start very early on. I think it's the identification of wanting to know that there's good communication across the team, you know, and I think when we went from being live stand up all the time or video, whichever it was, to uh, actually going to um, a, a Slack post stand up where everybody posts in the day, I was a little bit hesitant because I was a little worried that we were going to lose that communication or that sense of connection. But honestly, I think it's given us both aspects to it. So I wouldn't necessarily say don't do like a Slack post stand up, but make it really your own, you know, I think we, we, we started one way and we kept tweaking it and we kept tweaking it and knowing us, we'll tweak it again, but it always continues to be um, something that is part of our fabric, not to be mm -hmm. too, uh, <laughs> too trait with that word or whatever, <laughs> but I think it was, I think it is something that makes us kind of who we are. And I think it's a lot of fun and it, and it keeps everybody on the same page, you know? I don't know how many times I've, somebody's actually posted and I might have missed the post, but somebody says, oh, well, actually this happened. And I'm like, oh, I missed that post. But everybody knew because that had been posted. So it actually becomes really critical and literally takes about three minutes every morning for everybody to do it if it's not the live stand-up. And the, our live stand-ups take about 15, 20 minutes, even with the number of people we have. That's great. I think that's really helpful to sort of paint the picture of how these are actually happening within the team. So if someone did want to try and start to implement those within maybe their, their smaller team or a larger organization, I think that's really helpful. As we wrap up today, any final thoughts on standups that you wanted to reiterate or that we haven't talked about yet? The only thing I forgot to mention is we're really good. And by we, I mean, Andy is really good at mentioning shout outs and like anniversaries and birthdays. Those are another aspect. So everyone is making sure we get recognition when it is due. So that's also really nice. Well, I got to give credit to Sarah on that too, because she's in the background sending me Slack messages like, don't forget to mention this, somebody's birthday or whatever. So thanks for that. But but yeah, and that's also a really important thing about that. That would be a good last point is that it gives you an opportunity to congratulate members of the team for things that they've done. And I think that, get, you know, without a stand up, without some sort of group meeting to be able to do that regularly, you don't have that opportunity. Well, thank you both for sharing more about what standups are. I think, you know, not only have we given good concrete information if people want to try this, but also they get a, a little more insight into who we are and what we have going on behind the scenes that uh, really is about our fabric and continuing to build on that culture. So thank you both for today. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more about our team and culture, see what we're hiring for, or try out The Receptionist for two weeks free, no credit card required, visit us at thereceptionist.com.